What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another episode of JTAG and RGH tutorials. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Xbox 360 Neighborhood because we're kind of moving on now from the kind of offline stuff we've done to, and I'm going to start showing you guys how to get set up for getting your console online so you can get your Xbox 360, uh, your JTAG or your RGH on Xbox Live so you can mod games online and play games online. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. But in order to do that, we need to first get Xbox 360 Neighborhood. And what Xbox 360 Neighborhood allows you to do is basically um, access your Xbox's hard drive from your computer, just from your file explorer, like just the same way you would access a hard drive on your computer, pretty much. You can do the same thing. You can also drag and drop files from your console's hard drive to your computer and drag files from your computer to your console all from your computer's operating system and you can also remotely launch games and stuff like that. So in order to do that the first thing you need to do is install the Microsoft Software Development Kit on your computer. So this will be linked in the download download link in the description. So go ahead and run this. This is quite a large exe so it may take a little while to open but once it does open you just want to say next next and go ahead and install to the default location just do a minimum installation which will be fine you won't get the option to do a full installation unless you have like um, I think Visual Studio installed for developing stuff uh, so minimum installation will do just fine and it'll take a little bit but once it's installed you'll see a little Xbox 360 neighborhood icon appears in the top left hand corner of your screen now you can pretty much get rid of the um, the installer now that you've got it installed and just use this to access neighborhood now xbox 360 neighborhoods part of the software development kit it's designed for development kit consoles it's not designed for obviously jtag and rgh consoles it's you know microsoft's software development kit for the xbox 360 so it's obviously not meant to work with hacked consoles but there is a plugin that you can add in dash launch which will allow neighborhood to communicate with your jtag or rgh console pretty much in the same way that it would normally work with a dev kit, which is pretty cool. In order for that, you need this plugin here called xbdm.xcx, which I will go ahead and uh, link in the description as well. So what you want to go ahead and do is, of course, plug in a USB stick that is FAT32 format and drag your xbdm.xcx in there. And then I will head over to the Xbox and show you guys what to do from there. So once you're on the console, what you want to go ahead and do is launch into XCX menu. We've set this up by dashboarding and holding down X uh, when we set up dash launch. That'll take me into XCX menu. Of course, you can launch it from within uh, your My Games in the normal dashboard. Okay, so once you're on XCX menu, you want to go ahead and press X and go to USB 0. So your USB stick that you've plugged in. Copy the xbdm.xcx and press X and go to HDD1 and just paste it right in the root here. So just go ahead and paste it in here and that's it done. You can see I already had it in there but uh, you won't already have that in there uh, if you haven't installed it before. So you just want to paste the xbdm.xcx in the root of HDD1 and from there we can go into Homebrew and launch dash launch version 3.18 or whatever version you're currently on. So then you want to go into plugins and you want to select plugin 1 and you want to select HDD and find the xbdm.xcx that we had. So xbdm.xcx will select it. That's added as a plugin. Now that that's added as a plugin you can go ahead and press right bumper and head down to your HDD and press X to save and you'll get the little notification in the bottom left that says setting save to HDD and then you can press B and back out to the dashboard okay now all you want to do now is basically switch off the console and switch it back on so just restart the console and I'll be back with you guys on the computer Okay, so once you're back on the computer, all you want to do is double click on Xbox 360 Neighborhood and double click on Add Xbox 360. Make sure you do reboot the console, otherwise the plugin does not load. It, the plugin actually loads when the console boots up. So when you first add the plugin, it's not going to be running until you reboot the console. 
So once you've rebooted the console, you can click Next and go ahead and you can either type in JTAG and this sometimes works. It depends on the way your network's configured. Um, this net hardly ever works for me though. Um, if you type in JTAG, could not be found. For you, that might work. It might find it. If not, you need to type in the actual IP address of the console, which you can find if you're if you're on Aurora. You can find just by pressing the back button on um, on Aurora. Oh, there we go. So you can see the IP address here: 192.168.137.217. So if I type that IP address in here, so 137.217, and click next, it found it. And I can click yes. Make sure you click yes to make it the default console, and then click finish. And now that you've done that, your console will show up in here. And this is it. We can now access everything that's on the console from the computer. So I can just double click here. Here's my hard drive, my HDD1. I can double click that. So there's the xbdm.xcx I added. There's our homebrew folder with the dash launch, dash launch in here. So that loads up. Aurora, it's all in here. XM360. Got all that stuff in here. If we go into games, we've got Black Ops 2. So these are all the files for Black Ops 2. So yeah, that is what you can basically do. Now if I want to um, go ahead and say edit some files here, say I want to copy this to the desktop, I can just drag and drop it to the desktop and it will copy over. And now it's on my desktop. If I want to edit it and drag it back on, I can drag it back on and replace without having to copy to USB stick. So you can see how this makes things a lot more convenient. You don't have to, you know, put a file on a USB stick and then plug it into the console and copy it using XCX menu anymore. You can just drag and drop files to and fro uh, really easily and it just speeds up things quite a lot. So that is one good thing. There's a couple of important things though as to why we need to use this um, when we go online. And the important thing is that you cannot really run homebrew applications while you're connected to Xbox Live because you will get banned pretty damn fast if you go on homebrew applications. So if you go, go on Aurora, anything in here basically, if we, lo if we loaded up Dash Launch or Aurora or XM360 while we were connected to Xbox Live, we would get console banned pretty fast. Also, if you say, for example, uh, XCX Menu is a bit of a weird one because um, the version of XCX Menu that we installed in episode one is a live safe version, so it kind of you know tricks the uh, the console into thinking that you're actually on the dashboard even though you're on XCX Menu. So that one's kind of safe to go to use while you're on Xbox Live, but uh, there's no reason why you need to use it because you can of course just use Neighborhood. Uh, which is undetectable, which is why we need to use this. And we can use it for many different things. If you want to edit your dash launch settings while you're on Xbox Live, you don't need to launch the dash launch um, homebrew application anymore. If we want to edit our plugins or anything in dash launch, you can just drag this launch.ini file, which is the configuration file for dash launch, and you can just copy that over to your desktop and then open it in Notepad and this is basically everything in here. So here's our button X that launches the XCX menu. Here's our plugins list. So if we wanted to add more plugins, we don't need to actually launch the application. We can just add the plugins in here and save. If we want to edit any of the dash launch settings like ping patch or live block, we can go ahead and modify those. You can see our default dashboard is set to Aurora. If I wanted to change that, I could change that from within this notepad document and then just save it. And then after I've saved it, I can just drag and drop that on. And there, and if I was doing that on Xbox Live, I've edited my dash launch settings without having to launch the homebrew application. Another great thing about Neighborhood is you can also remotely launch games from Neighborhood as well. So if I pop this over into the corner here and open this up, uh, what we can do, you can see I'm on Aurora right now, if I want to launch Black Ops 2, I don't need to, again, go on a homebrew application like XCX Menu or Aurora to launch the game. I can launch it from within Neighborhood. I just have to find where the game is located and then find the file called 
uh, default.xcx for single player or default MP for multiplayer and just double click it. And when I double click that, it goes ahead and launches the game. So there we go, Black Ops 2 is loading. So this is basically what you want to use when you're on Xbox Live because you don't have to run any homebrew applications. You can switch games, you can edit your settings, you can do all of that stuff remotely from your computer without being detect without anything being detected when you're on Xbox Live. So that is why it's very important to install this. Plus it also makes, you know, copying files and installing mods, you know, lots of mods come in different files and stuff that you need to drag into the game directory um, or, you know, add as a dash launch plugin. You can do all that remotely from this application instead of uh, having to launch any of the homebrew apps to do it. So yeah, that is basically how you install Xbox 360 Neighbourhood. Stay tuned for the next episode of uh, JTAG and RGH Tutorials where we're going to be looking at um, actually getting online. So we're going to be looking at how to actually get your console on Xbox Live. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we'll be looking at installing mod menus and mod tools and various other things after that. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one.